Now, though, our top story calls for a change in the law as Sussex families are being being stopped from seeing their loved ones in care homes. Those going into care homes need to know that the person most important to them is part of their care team. Regardless of pandemics, we'll always be able to see that one essential person. Yeah, campaigners in Sussex say despite a relaxation of the COVID rules, many care homes are still limiting visits by friends and relatives. And that is sadly leading to devastating consequences. My friend would rather be in prison. She actually believes that she has been put in prison. And I think it is terrible to think that in her late years, when she's probably not going to live for much longer, she doesn't have the comfort of her family around her, of just half an hour once a week with one person who has been tested and is putting her at no risk whatsoever. Well, that's Christina Sharp speaking to us back in May. Um, As we heard, her friend uh, was left feeling like a prisoner after being denied visits at her care home. The sad thing is, from what we're hearing, not much has changed. You see, back in March, the government relaxed the rules, allowing care home residents to nominate an ECG, an essential caregiver, who would be allowed unrestricted access for visits. But the problem is, it's guidance only. It's not mandatory. And campaigners say many care homes, as a result, are simply not following it. Kate Miko is from West Hoathly, near East Grinstead. Her mum's care home has refused to give her ECG status. I totally understand. From March to May last year, care homes had the most horrific time. You know, there was no PPE, there was no testing, people being discharged back into them. So, you know, I, I, I get why they're, they're frightened of opening up a bit more, but we're further down the road now. The petition's twofold. One is to make the guidance mandatory so that we don't get this postcode lottery of care homes picking and choosing which part of the guidance they might or might not follow. And the second part is is a longer term goal. You know, no one chooses to put a, a loved one into a care home lightly. It's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Families are terrified. They'll never see their loved one again if they put them into a care home. Those going into care homes need to know that the person most important to them, be it a family or a friend or whatever, is part of their care team. Regardless of pandemics, we'll always be able to see that one essential person, that one person who means the most to them and can connect with their past and their history. And it just makes a huge difference. We deal with a lot of or have spoken to a lot of amazing care homes who have been facilitating visits since last July. And that's what's so frustrating, is we know it can be done. And it's just some of the bigger corporate groups who just simply don't want to recognise or will pick and choose which parts of the guidance they will follow and which they won't, because it's not mandatory, it's guidance. Well, Kate is one of more than 270,000 people who have signed a petition calling on the government to make that guidance on ECG's law. Well, on the line now, I have Dawn Fellingham from Brighton. Her mum is 79 and has been in the care home in the city for nearly two years. Dawn got ECG status in May, but boy, she had to fight hard for it. Uh, While Joanna Janaway from West Sussex can't see her father with dementia because her mum is the one with the ECG status. Well, a big thank you to both of you for joining us this morning. Um, Dawn, you have got this ECG status now, but it didn't come easy, did it? No, no. Um, and I think it's partly some of the larger companies, um, well, making up their own guidance, and it wasn't necessarily disseminated disseminated to some of their care homes straight away. Um, so the first time I asked her, I was told, no, the company don't do that. So, <laughs> so how long did you go I just without kept seeing asking. your mum? Um, well, probably five months in total. Um, also my father, who she's been married to for 59 years, um, due to, I think, from November 20 to April 21, partly due to outbreaks and then a a lockdown, then another outbreak and not being given the status five whole months. She didn't see anybody apart from... Heartbreaking, isn't it? Really it, tough on it you. Was and heartbreaking. Your, really tough on you and your dad. But what kind of impact did it have on your mum? Well, she, I mean, she has dementia, but she she's not to the point where she doesn't understand. She didn't understand that we why we weren't visiting. It's just the fact that she, you know, we speak to her every day on the phone. Fortunately, 
so we were able to support her but you know she was already distressed from some of the symptoms that she has from hallucinations and and delusions so we weren't able to comfort her Mm. so the staff had to do that and sometimes to the point where you know she was having sedation you know to to calm her down I mean it's, it's this is and this is still going on um unnecessarily and it's just heartbreaking hugely, yeah and hugely traumatic for all involved i mean i suppose to to play well, sleepless advocate, nights yeah, yeah. I, I guess you know in the in the defense of these care homes though i mean do you understand their caution i mean we've seen some horrible outbreaks you know so many residents lost to this horrible virus mm. you know can you see why they they want to carry on those restrictions i mean they will argue they're just doing this to keep those residents safe Yes, but it depends what you mean by by safe. Um, so the government guidance does 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 reflect the fact that their mental well being and is as important as being protected from COVID. And mm. the fact that even so, there, there has to be a line drawn somewhere to protect their human rights because literally residents were dying of isolation because they don't understand necessarily why they're not allowed and they think they've been abandoned oh, um, and they're not they're not eating um, so but I do kind of I do understand and I really sympathize with the care staff who had to literally watch the residents they've known for years dying yeah. uh, or is... being being suffering from yeah. you know just closing down and I mean and... in March I think at Mother's Day they were all ready to you know all dressed up ready to see their family um and they had a, that day or it, it, they had another lockdown a, another outbreak Just and at that point nobody me. had ecg status in the home heartbreaking they had the hair done oh looking stop. forward to seeing their family i, can't I know bear so, it. i can't bear it the so thing- that's why it's so important that we get this the government to listen yeah the thing is whenever we talk to care home providers on on the show they all sort of say the same thing you know that the, mm. the advice has been very confusing and and it has always just been guidance do you know what i mean so as soon as you say to somebody well this is the guide you know you're, you're not making it mandatory you're saying this is the advice this is the guidance then people are going to kind of make up their own rules aren't they they are but i don't i don't think the the essential caregiver status for example is there's nothing confusing about that mm. With the essential I mean, caregiver uh, status, just clear this mm, up for me. Can, can yeah. only one member of the family have it? Because that's going to be tough, isn't it? How do you decide whether you get that or, or in your case, your dad? Well, exactly. But the government guidance does actually say it doesn't necessarily have to be one uh, essential caregiver. Um, so, yes, in a recent outbreak, I was allowed to see my mother, but my father wasn't. Mm. So um, the company policy I was told that they wouldn't allow to so I said well couldn't we just have one at a time they have actually allowed that now so they're they're in another outbreak so we're in the third week of that my father is allowed to see my mother I'm not (laughs) so so situation um and it doesn't seem to be any common sense Mm. in some cases um very frustrating yes. for you all, Dawn. I really, I really hope that the situation improves. I really do. Um, Joanne also joins us on the line. Um, Joanne, just remind us of your situation. Um, good morning. Basically, my mum only got um, granted ECG in August this year um, after a long fight. Um, and then the home went into a lockdown with a breakout in October. Um, and my mum was still refused entry. Oh, hang on. Um, I'm confused now. I thought the whole point of an ECG was that you had yeah. the same status as being part of the care team. So even in the yeah. circumstance of a lockdown, you could still go in. No? Yeah, exactly that. But um, my mum was still refused. And when I emailed the home to ask why that was, even though she had ECG status, I was just told that because my dad is mobile still and not bed bound, um, and he walks around the floor, which is great for him, um, that it could cause a potential risk of spreading infection with my mum going in, and that a risk assessment had been done. And based on that, um, that's the how they made their decision. But the risk assessment was never discussed with me or my mum as to why. 
um, and they just refused her entry for, for oh. four weeks. And again, you know, like I said to Dawn, what sort of impact does that have on, on them both? Massively, because we only just got back into a routine of my mum being able to regularly visit him. Um, and although people can say, oh, you know, he's got dementia, he probably doesn't know you're there, because my dad declined very much in the first lockdown, not seeing him for seven months. He lost all all speech and double incontinent, and we lost a massive part of him in the first lockdown. So to be able to build up that again and then be refused, we just felt like we was letting him down. And and like Dawn said, it's it's them feeling neglected and that's the worst part that you feel guilty for but actually have no control over Mm. because we want to be there we want to be supporting him you know my mum goes in at lunchtime to to help feed him and dress him and change him if need be and both me and my mum are qualified carers I work private in the private sector for caring so we it's not even like we don't know what we're doing to be able to help double jabs I take it yeah yeah, actually, we've just had our third, so... So um, fully vaccinated, and I'm guessing you could test. Yeah. I mean, is that the way around this? You know, if you test every yeah, day and before you go in? that's the argument as well, is that my mum was doing everything that the carers do uh, on a weekly basis. So she was doing the PCR test to go in every week, um, wearing full PPE, um, gloves and apron and mask, and still being denied access. Mm. I almost don't want to ask this next question because I don't think I can bear the answer. But what will happen, say, for example, at Christmas? Will you be able to see your dad on Christmas we've Day? Just, no, we've just actually had an email this week um, to tell us that they cannot facilitate Christmas visits. Why? No explanation. No they reason just, given. That, no, it just basically says that we cannot facilitate Christmas visits this year. So, so no I one will be able see to see your dad? dad. Apparently so. So apparently I won't see him again. This will be the second year I haven't seen him for Christmas. Oh, Joanne. Um, what is that going to feel like as a family? It's devastating. There's, there's actually no words that can describe it. But the hurt, the pain, the upset of not having any control over our own loved ones that we just want to be there for, to support in the most crucial times of their lives right now. Um, Losing them to dementia as it is, is hard enough. It strips them of their personalities, you know, everything it could possibly do. And to not be able to then be involved in their last, we never, you never know how long it's going to go on for. It could end tomorrow. It could be another two years. We just want to be there and be a part of their lives still like we would if they was on the outside living at home or living on their own and visiting them. And to not be allowed to do that is, is the most heart wrenching thing you could possibly face in life. From my, um, from my experience I'm so sorry I really am um it, it's, it's heartbreaking isn't it? when you hear you know firsthand what these families are going through um we did ask to speak to Gillian Keegan this morning she's the MP for Chichester who is also the Minister for Care but we were told she wasn't available in a statement the Department for Health and Social Care told us we are doing everything we can to support care providers to facilitate visits safely including ensuring all residents can nominate an essential caregiver. We're removing limits on visitors and reducing the period of time visit restrictions apply following an outbreak. Our message is clear. All care home residents should be supported to get the care and companionship they need from visitors as this is essential to their health and well-being. It's 21 minutes past seven. Saturday morning with the Marnie Mo. Dance music goes classical for one night only as Sussex resident and 